So, so we've got it fixing this thing. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Let's get it apart and see how lucky we get. First challenge is getting it apart. I think I've got to get those two screws and I think it will lift upwards. These screws have been quite badly worn as well. It's been opened up quite a few times by the looks of it. Which I probably don't have to take it right out. I'm going to just leave it in because it's in slots. Okay, let's try that. No? Is that cover over the top of it? I think it is. I might take this rear panel off too. I've ordered some flat head screws there and there. We'll try taking those off and see what it does. Which are already slightly loose, which is always interesting. These are plastic. They're all chrome really, but they're plastic. Ah, oh, there we go. That's part of the, the casing. Right. Here we go. We're in. It has a little diagram on there saying about the voltage settings. I'll just double check that in case there's something funny with it. Yeah, color, wild colours have to be changed around as well. Can I see that on there? What are we dealing with here? I just want to verify this before doing anything else. There's a block on the other side at the bottom. I think it's that white block, I think it's the other one. Look at that, we've got a sticker in there. They put the sticker on for the minimum voltage. That's pretty cool. So what are we looking for here? We're looking for, for 230 volts should be brown. Uh, we've got blue there. Brown's in number three. Brown and blue are better front. Interesting. <laughs> hmm. Brown, red, orange, green. Then should be blue, then yellow. So the actual wiring on here is correct. So it's stated in the cover here that it should be brown going here and blue going there from this cable here. And they're the back to front. Does that matter? Where does it go to? So that's that flex comes up here. Outside of the unit. Round the front. And up to the power switch. Hmm. I'm suspicious. It's all heat shrunk too, which is, I suppose, kind of nice. Someone else has done that. I think that's not factory. Well, if it's just AC switching, it probably won't matter. But if it's from a certain winding, it might matter. So what I think we've got here is the AC comes in. We've got a fuse. Interesting fuse holders inside the units are over here. The fuse holder right there. And there's the end of it in there. So it comes in, it goes to there, it comes up here as a pair, it goes back out again. So it's AC coming in phase and phase and neutral, which are swapped on this connector. May it matter? It might, but it probably doesn't. I might just swap those around. Because <laughs> just because of uh, the fact it seems a bit wrong. At least the wiring matches up for the for the voltage selection. So let's just have a little look around so we can see anything obvious. So there's a few electrolytics in there. These will seem to be socketed, socketed transistors and stuff. So maybe reseating things would be good. I'm not seeing anything which looks like damage. Got some board interconnects here as well. So maybe reseating the boards would help as well. Sometimes that can help. And power supply rail stuff. Obviously you've got these adjustments here, which are marked. So you've got 40 volt, minus 12, plus 6, plus 12. Regulators and stuff up top here. Got some wires coming off here, so these are probably the supply rails coming off. So if I look at the main board where they go to, yeah, there are marked. So it's plus six volts, minus twelve, plus twelve, zero volts, and a couple of which aren't marked. From what I can see, I was plus forty over here. It's forty volt marked there. But it's nice that all these parts are socketed, you know. So we've got these ICs up here as well. They're all on sockets. Substitution is easy, just unplug one, plug another one in. I see here, but no idea what that is. Looks like a Phillips part number, so that could be tricky if that's what's wrong. So it could even be something like that, where you've got one of switches has been stressed a bit maybe, and maybe um, it's affected it. 
Lots of speculation. So this is this plug in ribbon here. Which is what goes to these various knobs on the front panel here. It's plugged into this ribbon. It's pretty cool. Alright, well we'll power it up and we'll check voltages around here. Well on the other, on the circuit board we'll do it on there. Let's see what we get out of there. Okay, let's hook it up to this. So we've got six volts here, that's fine. Got minus twelve volts here, which is fine. We have twelve volts there, which is fine. Over here we have minus twenty-five volts, nearly minus twenty-six. And 13 volts, which is the one I just think is a bit weird, because why would we have 13? The 25 volt itself is a bit weird, because it's not actually one of the rails, but we've got a 40 volt rail, so I'm kind of wondering what the situation is there with that. So we can trace these rails to where they go. 40 volt adjustment here, just try and trace the tracks around, go around to the other side over there. So I think that 13 volt and the 25 volt ones aren't right. I think I might need to try and figure out which parts it is that's causing that, or which ones are generating that voltage. We've got some big caps in the back here. So you're not getting 40 volts. We showed a circuit diagram, that'd be really great. Let's turn this off again because I was at myself. I thought you saying stupid. Let's try and trace out this uh, this rail goes. So that 13 volt rail, which is the yellow wire, comes up to that tab up there, which goes where? Just goes straight to that device there. That could be a feedback though. So it all seems to go to that device there from that yellow rail, which that 13 volt I was getting. So the brown wire which is 25 volts, there's a tab there, could it be bare caps or could it be this? Let's try popping it out and see if I can have a look at it. I'm lucky I can pop it out. Let's move it. So what we got? LM723. I'm pretty sure I've got some of these. I'm pretty sure these are what was in the, um, the Fluke 5200A which I was fixing before. That number is definitely very familiar. So I could just try replacing that and see if anything changes. So I have some brand new LM73s. I only have three left, so hopefully it's not uh, shorted out somewhere or something. Actually, I should probably check the rails, eh? See if there's a short on the rails. Let me do that first before I plug a new one in. Just in case it's a problem. Let's put up a data sheet for it and then find out the pin out. So let's check for a short on the output of that socket there for this voltage regulator. So LM723 is a voltage regulator, not an op amp, but I've used them before in the Fluke 5200A when I've repaired that. If you haven't seen that video, go back and check it out. It's 19 parts. <laughs> it's quite a long one. Let's measure resistance, okay. So we've got ground, we'll chuck that on there. Is that right, rail? Probe around. Now I think 6 is that one, I think. So there's nothing obvious there. Yeah, we'll look alright. So there's nothing on the output which looks like it's shorted. So that's good. So I've got one of those brand new ones. We'll drop that in. Okay, well. That's lined up and that's in. And all the legs are in their own holes. Let's try it again. Now, we're going to get smoke or we're going to get a voltage? What do you reckon? Any bets? Should have done the brown one, which I think is the one supposed to be 40 volts. Let's try it. Power on. 26 volts. Okay, it didn't change anything. <laughs> so it's probably not that that's wrong. Let's check this other one. 13 volts still. So nothing changed. So as chances are that part isn't the problem. Let's just check the other rails as well, just to be sure. In case something else has gone wrong. Still 12. Still minus 12. Still six, okay. So that part probably isn't the problem. Barely warm, so that's fine. Well, there goes that option. Let's put the original one back in again. Seems nothing changed. It's not going to be that. All right. So I'm still puzzled by the way it says 40 volts. I'm not getting it. But at least I now know that it's not that part. Substitution is always great. That's why I like socketed stuff because it makes it easy to work on. So I think I need to trace this adjustment back to tell me which regulator is supposed to be doing 40 volts and then trace it forwards from there. I think that's the way I'm going to have to do that. So you see the traces there, there's three traces, go around, go straight along. Two of them carry on around here. One goes to a resistor which drops down. 
We've got two to carry on. One goes straight to that red lighter there, which I think is pin two. We'll go and check. One trace net adjustment comes down to pin two of the op amp, oh, it's op amp red lighter down there. Just wire it away. So just there. The other one goes through, comes down, jumps across to a resistor over here, which comes down to pin one of that device and a couple of other things as well. Also goes upwards to that's that yellow tag. So your yellow wire is going to pin one. Yep, yellow wire is going to pin one. And that's current sense. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that that regulator there is indeed the 40 volt regulator. Alright, so I'm going to have to trace this power supply circuitry on this ball to try and figure out what's going on. So what do we find on the back? Now interesting, the circuit tree on the back is a little bit different. It's saying 40 volts. Let's try and get it in the light so you can see it. So you've got a smart 40 volts here. It sees little arrows going between each track. And then you've got a plus and minus here. So is it supposed to be 40 volts differential across those two tracks? Am I trying to chase something which isn't there? So let's have a look at that. Have power. Be careful what I rest my hands on. I'm getting 39 volts. So I'm chasing something which isn't there. You know? So it's actually not right anyway. It doesn't need adjusting. So yeah, okay, there isn't a problem after all. What I do need to do is adjust it. Do you want just slightly more? There we go. Perfect. Okay, so there isn't a problem after all. It's just uh, the power supply rails are a bit weird. Okay, that's a shame. That would have been a nice thing to trace down. Okay, so we think the power supplies are probably alright. Although I should check ripple, shouldn't I? Just check it all from this side. It's just easier now. We've got it flipped over. So that's negative route. Zero. Good. Six foot rail. No, nothing. It's looking alright. And we've got another rail over here somewhere. Down there. Also looking alright according to the multimeter at least. It's not as good as the scope, but it still tells you something there. And across that 40 watt rail. Looking alright too. So okay, ripple's looking alright. Nothing obvious at least. Okay, well we've got nowhere then. So it looks like the fault is on the output board, which appears to be this board over here. Now according to the diagram of the 5715 the 100 series board which is this one here um, is like the control circuitry and the 200 board is the upper board. Now this looks like it's got the same number sequence, uh, number scheme. So this is BU240 that connector which means that's the 200 board. So I believe that's the board I need to be looking at which is nice to convenient because it's on the side it's easy to get to. Uh, so I've already verified, I didn't recall that bit at the time, but I've already verified that the clock output works, the auxiliary output works, although it's glitchy, all these controls seem to need to clean. Um, I was getting some weird timing stuff going on there too, so maybe I need to replace some capacitors around the place too. I might just recap it if I get it working. But the pulse output doesn't have anything at all coming out, apart from a DC offset, which is, um, it goes down to minus if I have both slides together, it's going to minus 22.4 and positive 16.4. So it's, it's a, it is a DC offset to the negative side. So there could be an input problem to the amplifier. Something's pulling it down. So that's where I'm sort of leaning towards now. So the, the upper ball there on the, on the right hand side is what I need to look at next. Which is behind this rail too. But So some adjustments on there for start which look like they are adjusted, not all just like stuck to one end, because I've seen that before. So these controls for the output are actually going to these two pots here, two, two linear pots. So that was a bit of a clue to to where the board was anyway, but I didn't actually look that far. So there are some capacitors and stuff on that board, plug-in transistors, everything's all plug-in, which is great. I like plug-in stuff. Now those output transistors, which are mounted on this heatsink edge here, they go straight onto the board, they're like plugged in. 
So you probably just see it in there if I zoom in on this camera. Just see there's one just there and there's a few more inside the unit down there. Which will just plug into that board. And interestingly there's some parts mounted on the circuit side of the board as well. So instead of just being on that side, it's also on the other side of the board where the heat sink is. Well, you can see you've got those resistors standing up there for example. But there's some more parts down inside there. Which are basically some resistors, a bunch of resistors, a couple of caps, not much in there really. There's unlikely to be anything in there which is a problem. So something on that board is a problem, I believe. So it could be a bad transistor on, on this board here, it could be when these, when these chips are bad. This chip here is marked 0012. So yeah, 0012 is what it's marked as. Which isn't helpful because means I don't know what that chip is. I mean, that circuit diagram, I can't easily just um, take a guess based on the pinout. I have to diagnose it and backtrace it and stuff like that and reverse engineer it. So we also have this plug-in module here. Which is obviously a bunch of adjustments. That's an MC one four, so one seven four one CP. That part there. So that's an op amp. I'll try and see what these are. These are probably the same parts. So what we got in here? MC one seven four one CP. MC one seven four one CP. MC four one seven B. Yeah, there's all the same parts, apart from the top one, which is a MC1741CM. Uh, so maybe that's been replaced at some point. Okay, so I've got some uh, UA741CP op amps here. So I'm just going to use one of them. I'm just going to pop one out, swap it out, see if anything changes. And let's do that for each one until either it fixes itself or nothing changes. If nothing changes, I know it's none of those. And I have to look a bit deeper. but. My experience has been op amps are one of the first things I look at. If there's op amps in there and something's not working, I'm always suspicious about op amps. Just like that's where I always think the problem is. Especially when you've got a DC offset, which is what I've got right now, is a, is a DC offset. I could actually do probing on, on the op amps and actually check the inputs and outputs and see if they look like they're working. I could also do that. But sometimes it's quicker just to substitute it with something else. Oh, I see a pin strainer. I still haven't found that. Alright, here we go. So I've got it hooked up to the scope. Let's see if anything happens. No, no different. So it's not that one. Put the original back in. It's a bit easier. Okay, that's that one. Turn it on again. Still DC offset, no different. It's not changed. Okay, keep going. At the very least, what I'm doing is resetting the ICs, which um, is always a good thing too, because it helps them to clean the contacts up. Because they can get a little bit corroded sometimes and a bit oxidised. Can just help them a little bit. Got to find that pin strainer. Again. No, it's the same too. No different there. So at the very least we know what it isn't being. You know, we're always a little, you know, may think, oh, that's no, not working. It's not. You're not getting any further ahead. Well, actually, you are getting further ahead because you know what it isn't, which is failed. You know, by placing these one by one with a substitute part, you know it's not that one. It's not that one. At least you pretty good uh, chance it's not those ones. It's not likely to uh, be multiple devices. Sometimes it's, it can be sometimes, but usually it's the one. Yeah, that's not different either. Yeah, 
Now what I'm worried about is that it's going to be the 14 pin device at the back there because that is a mystery device. It could be a quad op amp. It's entirely, entirely possible it is a quad op amp, but uh, we'll see. Now that changed something. That's different. I'm not sure it's different in a good way. Let's get warm. Okay, I think we found something. Well, this device in here, which is one which has been replaced previously, it's a different one. And that's getting warm. And the offset changed. That changed something, so we're on to something. So that was getting warm and it wasn't, um, it didn't have the same positive offset as the previous one did, as the original part. And yes, I did put it in the right around, I did double check. So something that seems to be loading down the op amp. That means it's probably an output transistor from an op amp. Whatever that's feeding is likely to be the problem. Let's uh, look at the pinout for this op amp because I don't remember what it is offhand and see if I can see anything obvious there. So I just checked the resistance on the output of pin 6 to ground well VSS reference on that op amp and it seemed fine. I should do one to ground actually. I'm assuming chassis is ground. It probably is. Back to front but yeah that's alright. Yeah because it's a split rail supply as well. Right. Okay, I can see where it goes. Right, it goes up there. So the op amp we're looking at is located right here. And we're looking at that pin there, pin six, which comes up here, goes around over to there. So what's that going to? It goes to a resistor, which is in parallel with another resistor. So it's obviously a voltage divider. Good point to that. You'll see there, so that's the resistor there comes up to. And it jumps over to here, which is another resistor, which goes back down to there, which comes up here, and also goes up there too. So there's two traces you have to try and follow. Right, so it goes to the pot. So that's actually going to the pot control. So it's a feedback circuitry on that side. And the other side comes over here, which goes to an adjuster. And it goes to a trimmer over here. So interesting, that shouldn't be loading it down. So why would that op amp be getting hot? So I'm gonna put this op amp back in again and check voltages on it and just see if I can diagnose what's going on with voltages. So my tell me what's going going on, if it's a loading or if it's something else. This is the original one I'm putting back in. did seem to perform differently with the original one. Let's hook this back up and retest as it is. See if things changed. So we've got DC offset again there, that's 14 volts, that's back how it was before then. Yeah. So that's exactly how it was. So interesting using different op amps has given a different result. Let's hook this around again. measure across the supplies first. I've got back to front but it doesn't matter. 35 volts across that chip. Seriously? 35? 35 volts across the chip seems a little bit high. Hmm. Let's just check the other ones out. Randomly check another one out. 35 as well. We'll smash rating on these things. So I'm going to try substituting this part again with a different one because I'm just suspicious about something not being right here. I mean, the input voltages seem to check out, but I just got a suspicion something's not right. So this is our LM307, which is a pin compatible device. I believe it's actually a lower noise version of the Basic 741 so it should be usable. So I'll pop this in there and see if that changes anything. Okay, pop that in. Power cord is on, let's hook up the scope to it. See, that's performing the same as the original part. 
Okay. What if the other one had failed? That makes you wonder now. If I put that substitute in, it didn't work. Has it failed because I put it into one of these other positions, which has got a problem? That's working exactly the same with that part than it is the original. That makes you wonder. I know the next one over, I think it was. I checked the voltage on that, it seemed okay. Maybe let's do some program on this. Negative was four, so let's tie it onto that one. Two point seven volts there, fully positive. Ten volts that side. Ten volts that side. That's fully positive. So if I bring us down halfway-ish, eighteen volts. Eighteen volts. Eighteen volts. Go all the way down. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-two. So yes, it is acting as an amplifier, definitely, because it's shifting up and down. So that one there seems to be working. So let's try the next one over, which is here. Put it with 312 output. I don't know if this is going to change anything or not, it may not. Not really. But those are looking kind of normal, I suppose. Should mix one over. 12, 12, 12. Down. Also looking normal. There's nothing stands out as being bad. Five point two, five point two, point nine, uh, nine volts it was. Two point six that must change with a level. That one also seems okay. Six, six, six. Just like as a buffer. Change slightly, so that seems alright too. That's interesting. There's definitely warmth in this area from these resistors here. But since it doesn't really have much of an eye of an output, I'm surprised that there's really any work going on there. There's another device here. What's that? BFW 16A. Don't worry, it's offhand. Oh, that's interesting. That's a short. BD-132 What's a BD-132? 
No, I have to look that one up. Let's find out. BD-132. So I'm going to try substituting this part here with a BD-140. It doesn't have the same current ratings. The voltage ratings on this part exceed the original. But it doesn't have the same current capacity. It's about half as much. But it might be okay for doing testing. So I'm just going to replace it. I do like the fact that it's all plugged in, it's brilliant. So let's just retest this now, I've got it out of the circuit. That's looking normal. That's okay, this part's not a problem. So whatever's controlling this device seems like it might be a problem. This isn't the problem. Move across there, should be able to verify that. 0 0.086, it's the same. I'll reverse the leads, let's make sure they're both reversed just in case the priority matters. No, it doesn't matter. So, whoever's controlling this device looks like it's got a problem. Okay, well, that means enough to replace it at least. I'll put this part back in again for now, so I think it's okay. So that's not the problem. Whatever's controlling it is now the emitter was pin 3, wasn't it? So the gate is what I need to trace back, which is that one I was looking at before. So let's trace that gate back. And that one's loose. Sounds like you have this apart. <laughs> okay. So the gate was the pin I was tracing, which goes to there, goes to there, goes to there. Now what's that one? There's a transistor right there. And the rest of it, I think, is resistors. Yes, it is. So this transistor right here. Let's pull that out. Retest. Still short, so it's not a transistor. Now that's interesting. Let's check the transistor anyway. Let's use this. I'll be using trying to probe it. Short circuit on red and green. Let me just make sure I haven't got something touching on the probes. Retest. No, it's come out of the right this time. So it must have been the probes touching. So PMP, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, looks right. So that transistor's okay. Right. That's a shame, that would have been nice easy. Got I'm sure got something else. So, why is that measuring very low? That's a reversible socket, and I did the pull that out looking which way around it went. Uh oh. <laughs> I think it went like that. Okay. So, if it's still a short there, how is that possible? What says resistor value here? Yeah. 0.85. Uh -huh. So if it was short, it was on the other side of that resistor. Let's keep going. So this one of resistors here. It is the very top one, I think. Is it? No. It's the bottom resistor with this group of three here. So. comes across here, so that's got a low resistance across here. So if I measure from there, 
to the emitter of this, I should get the short. I do. So we've only other that visitors dead short. Progress. It goes to the op amp. Pin six. I didn't check the voltage on that one. And that's also the very first op amp I took out and tried. Still a low resistance, even without the op amp in there. Now that's interesting. Because I shouldn't assume also that if someone else hasn't been playing with this, because it looks like someone has been playing with this, they haven't put a chip in back in, back in upside down. So that is marking as pin 1 there, so that will be pin 6. And that's pin 7. Pin 6 has a resistor coming over. I think that's part of the voltage divider set up, set up there. Something here, something here is definitely not right. Don't know what yet. So let's check voltages on this op amp here, which is one I haven't checked yet. Uh, put the voltage around you be a bit more sensible. Turn the power on. So pin 4 is the negative side, which is that one here. Pin 7 is that one there. 13 volts. Output 8 volts. So I need to check the inputs to see what these are doing. I'm getting my head in there. Five. Two point five. So the inputs match, which they should do. If you get a mismatch on the inputs, the op amp's definitely bad. Um, so gate emitter. If it's only got point seven volts different or something, it might be all right. Or even trace the thing, which is the problem. Point six volts. That seems okay then. Damn it. <laughs> Another thing which turned out to be not a problem. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm running out of ideas. Short sure, pulling out every transistor and uh, checking them. The IC seem to be okay. The only thing I've checked is that big 14 pin one down there. BLX6 Y, I think it is. BLX67. BLX67. Let's look that up, shall we? What's a BOX67? So these parts I'm looking at, which I'm thinking are diodes, are actually not. They're RF transistors. I'm trying to see if I can see if, if there's got legs on them. So I couldn't see legs before. There's not. It's not on that side of the board. So it might be sandwiched in between the heatsink. Oh yeah, yeah, there's legs there. Yeah, there are transistors. Well that explains why I wasn't measuring the right things, because I was actually not measuring that part at all, I was measuring the circuit board. Okay. Uh that flash. So those are all just basic op amps. I could just try popping them out. Focus you bastard. Come on. Buddy camera. 